so uh, our objective today is to show you um, some techniques that you can use within the uh, performance modeler component of TM1 that can save you quite a bit of time and effort in your development for some uh, fairly common tasks that you you might uh, be performing. So the first um, topic uh, I'm going to discuss is uh, how to develop a ragged or unbalanced hierarchy. Um, in the latest releases, they've added new functionality in this area that um, you might not be aware of, and uh, also it's it's not uh, extensively documented. So I'm going to uh, go over some of the capabilities that are now available that you can leverage. So in um, in TM1, Cognos doesn't specifically define um, what a ragged or unbalanced hierarchy is, but they give a couple of examples. So in the first case, the example of a ragged hierarchy is one where the levels are named. So in this case, we have an example where you've got a, a region or country and then a state and then a city. But depending on which branch you're on, um, there may be a, a blank un, you know, value or a repeated value. So in the first two rows, uh, we see that all three levels are populated going down to a city. But um, in the last two rows, there is no state. So you've got three levels um, in some cases and two levels in another. And then their example of an unbalanced hierarchy, they have basically generic levels. So they're not named. And the, um, the data is structured in such a way as that the, the lowest level uh, columns are left unpopulated. So it, it mainly looks to be a difference in how the source data is structured, um, not so much in terms of how the actual hierarchy uh, will be constructed. Because in uh, if I were to move employee C and D to level three and have the blank cells in the middle, well then it's it would be a ragged hierarchy, and yet when you uh, create it, it would be rendered the same way. So we'll, we'll see that um, when I go through the example. So the mechanism that you'd use in Performance Modeler to uh, create the dimension is the guided import wizard. So this um, has been available since uh, they introduced version 10 and, perform and the performance modeler tool. Um, in the latest release 10.2.2, um, there are new uh, features that, that I'll show you. So when you run the wizard, basically it's going to generate a process for you. So you can specify the process name and preview your data. Um, and then you would essentially define the structure of your hierarchy um, and set some properties for it. And then when you complete the wizard, it's actually going to generate a TI process. It's going to create your new dimension. Um, and that you'll see the, the hierarchy will be constructed with branches of variable length. So you can see here. Um, it starts with a grand total of all cities and goes down four levels to New York, but under Canada, it's just three levels. Likewise, Washington, D.C. just rolls up to USA. There's no state in between. Okay, so with that, let me switch over to my demo environment. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'll right click. Um, so I'm using the Go New Stores uh, sample uh, TM1 model that ships with the product. So this is just sort of vanilla um, objects here that I'm using to demonstrate these, but they would apply um, in you know any specific uh, cases that you might have. So I'm going to just right click on a folder and select Guided Import Dimensions which is going to launch the guided import wizard. 
So I will just assign a process name to this, import ragged hierarchy. <clears throat> and so you have a set of um, data sources available to you. Um, I'm just going to import from a CSV file. So I'll highlight that. Okay, so my example is a little bit different than um, the sample in the uh, in the documentation. So I have included a total level that have that I've uh, assigned all cities, and then within country, state, city, I've I've got a mix of where I've put the blanks. So um, in some cases it's state. I've treated Vatican as a state and left the country blank. So just to show you, you know, you the um, uh, blank uh, unpopulated uh, levels can be anywhere in your in your source data. So I will move to the advanced tab. So the import wizard, you know, follows some internal rules in terms of how to interpret your source file. So by default, it thinks that my total is a separate dimension from um, city. So it, it translated those three columns into a single dimension, but it treated total separately. So I'm going to have to go in and modify that. I'll show you that in a minute. So generally, you're going to want to click Show Properties. And so uh, right now, there is a dimension folder. And then I can click here and see what the properties are for a dimension and for any uh, column or uh, underneath that dimension. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to right click and say do not map because I don't want a separate dimension in this case. And I'll highlight the total and say level. So this then includes it in my city dimension and by default it's going to put it at the top. So I'll highlight city and I can edit my dimension name, so I'm just going to call this Ragged Hierarchy. Generally, um, you, you have the ability to assign dimension types here, so in this case we're looking at a hierarchy example. So I'll select Hierarchy. Um, when you generate this process, you have the ability to rerun it again in the future to make subsequent updates, so there's a, a parameter here that you can assign um, to to the process. So by default, it, um, it's going to create a total element. Since I included that in my source, I'm going to uncheck that. And there's an option to create named levels. I'm going to speak about this later on um, when we're talking about the um, cube design for BI, but I'll, I'll leave that checked for now. And let me uncheck this. So in version 10.2.0, that's when they introduced the parent-child um, option. And then in 10.2.2, which was released last May, uh, they introduced these two here for unbalanced and ragged source data. So this allows you, a parent-child will just be a two-column data source where you have the parent in one column and the child uh, in another, and it would have, you know, essentially all the levels uh, defined in those two columns. These two options are like what we just looked at, where you, each level is in a separate column. So if I check ragged, um, then I have a couple more options underneath. So the first one it says keep ragged structure. So the naming of this is a little bit confusing because if you check this box what it will do is it's going to create some derived entries and actually create a balanced hierarchy. So if you actually want to create a ragged or unbalanced hierarchy, you need to uncheck this, which is kind of inconsistent with the way they named it. Um, and then the skip levels defines how your source data is populated. So in this case, I have empty strings or blank uh, values. Um, for the areas of the hierarchy that are unpopulated. If your data source repeats a parent or repeats a child, you can, you can specify that. Um, this 
I found to be the simplest way and to do it is to have empty strings check the ragged source um, data. Uh, you have the option here, these are just standard sorting options available in TM1. Um, I'm going to leave those to none, which will just import it in the order that the source data comes in. Okay, so this defines um, my hierarchy. So I will go to the summary tab. So you, you'll get some messages here. If uh, anything is configured incorrectly, you might get some warnings and you could go back and, and correct those. So I'm going to go ahead and click finish. And so now you can see it has created a process and it has created my hierarchy. And if I, or my dimension, and I will do an expand all. And so you can see that for under uh, New York, it goes down four levels. So I have a total country, state, city, whereas Washington, D.C. rolls up directly under USA. So it's only three levels, and uh, Canada and its cities are three levels as well. So you can see I didn't have to, uh, you know, in the, in the past you would typically have to, you know, write some, uh, a fair amount of code to handle uh, the source data in order to construct uh, a hierarchy this way. So you can see I just did it entirely through the GUI um, and didn't have to write any code at all.